In this video, we are going to add in fish cages to the map, do a count of them, uh, and update a file that we have called cage clusters. We'll just update the count of how many cages are actually in that cluster. We will be performing an analysis where we run some buffers of different distances, let's just say 100 meters, 200, and 300 meters. We will generate random points in there for sampling. Um, and then we will extract the depth from the bathymetry maps that we have as well for those points. So to get started, what we're going to do is add in the cages and the clusters. So add so let's grab those. All right, if we look here, we have a bunch of clusters and then inside of the, the individual clusters, we have the cages. So let's come back and we will take a look at this cluster itself. So when I right click and open up the attribute table, we got a lot of information here, each cluster, um, number of cages, things like that. So let's go ahead and let's just update the cage count if we see here. So I'm going to select this and open the entry table. And then I'm going to come down here and show the selected features. Right now that is null. So there are none or there is no count, so to say. So let's go in and start counting. So it looks like we have a couple areas here. We'll do a quick little count. We have 16 there, 21, 21. We keep zooming out, and we'll zoom back in, 21, 25, 30, 32, 34, 38, and it looks like we're gonna get 42 cages total. I'm gonna right click and come back into here, except change this. Show select the features and we have cage count. We'll change that to we'll start editing first. Now we can update the cage count and do there are 42 cages inside of that cluster. All right. So we'll stop editing. So we went ahead and updated that. And that's how we can just do a quick count of the cages that we have. And now let's take a look at these cages in particular. So I'm going to just turn off this cluster. And I'm going to click up here. I'm going to draw this a box and I'll select them. You notice that they turned yellow. You know, I'm going to save these cages. Save the selected features. And we'll call these my selected cages. That's the file we'll save. I'll go ahead and click OK. Give me a quick overwrite. When I turn this off, I notice we still have those cages. So I'm going to get rid of these now that we have a file called selected cages. All right. Remove that. And what I want to do is create almost like a little square around each of these cages because we're going to end up buffering these out. But because they are individual, um, individual features, we will get a bunch of buffers. A buffer would happen for each cage, so we can either dissolve it or any. So we'll go ahead and create that square. We'll come into here, and I'll do create a new shape file. I'll call this cages extent. Save. Click the geometry type, and we'll do a polygon. And we'll set that to same look here. Go ahead and click OK. We now have this new file. And I'm going to turn on editing and I will add a polygon. So basically, we're just going to do a quick little square around that. All right, and we'll come over and do that for the, for the following cluster as well. Okay, so we have two squares, 
or not squares, but two polygons. And we're going to run a buffer on both of those. So we're going to do buffer, do a multi ring buffer. And we're going to do it on the cages extent exactly. We're going to do three rings. And we'll do 100 meters at each of these. Give it a run. And we end up with this. We have a file that now has three different rings on it, each of them uh, 100 meters apart from each other. Okay. I would go ahead and generate random points inside of these, but if we see here, part of these rings go onto the shoreline. I do not want it to put points in an area that we can't actually sample. What I'm going to do is bring in the shoreline. So let's go ahead, add vector. And let's grab the shape file. Go ahead and add that. And here we go. This is our Lake Victoria polygon. So I'm going to zoom in. We notice the base map's slightly off from the shoreline that we have. That can happen just based on whatever imagery you use to create the shoreline in the first place. But let's go ahead and do a clip. So I'm going to take the, the multi-ring buffer and I'm going to take the shoreline and we'll do a clip around that. And we now see the difference. Right, so this buffer, these areas are now all within the shoreline. What I'm going to do is just kind of get rid of some of these just to kind of clear up our clean up our layers just so we don't have too many going on here and confusing us. All right. You can see our fish cages are in the middle of these buffers. So let's go ahead and generate some random points inside of each of these. So in each feature, what we want to do is have 10 points. So if we look here, we should have 10 points total. 10, and we'll have 10 of those in the 300 meter area, 10 of them in the 200 meter, and 10 of them in the 100, and we get the same thing over here. And they're spread out in each of those. So now we can do 30 samples in each cage cluster and have 10 of them be in each distance each distant ring. So let's say, for example, that we actually want to get the depth before we go out of each of these points. What we're going to do is add in the vector layer. So, or the raster layer, apologies. Go add raster, and we want to bring in this symmetry point. All right, so we zoom out. This is a bathic metric map of the lake itself. What we're going to do now is extract the depth at each of these points. And do so we're going to sample raster values. We're going to use the points. That's it. And we'll just say sample depth. We'll go ahead and run that. And turn that off. And now when I open this up, we have a bunch of points and what we have is the distance that it is so these are all within the 100 meter ring some of these are in the 300 and then it actually has the depth of the point itself what it corresponds with and now let me go and take a look we can figure out where they're going from there so if we notice here this one is coming back as null and we see right there is where that's at if we look that's right on the edge of the the raster that we have so it didn't pick up any value and that's going to do the same thing what we could do is rerun it and we can move that point in just so it picks up so let's go ahead and actually let's do that so So I moved the sample. I don't actually want to move the sample one. We're going to get rid of the sample one, so we'll redo that. 
Let's go ahead and turn on editing for that one. Edit that vertice. Drop that in there. And same with this one. Cool. All right, we'll save that. We'll get rid of this and we will rerun it. Cool. All right, sample raster, random points. I said fall that depth. And when we reopen that up, we now should have, and it looks like we got rid of all the nulls. I don't see any when I go through there. So these are the depths of those points that we generated.